All right, so I'm a little early before the moon gets into Gemini, but I did have something on my mind. I was putting together like a written post. But I was like, let me just go ahead and make a video as well. I'll probably still put the post up. But for the most part, <clears throat> considering this song being the waning period, you know, during the waning period, we're shedding and getting prepared into the new moon time. You know what I'm saying? When we get to the new moon time, this is when we... Um, you know, we apply, well, during that period of time, during the waning period, we're shedding, you know what I'm saying? It's just a, a form of shedding. So everything that we are, we have accumulated as far as from the waxing period, that's when we was putting in the work, we hit the full climax of that, and then we hit the the um, kind of conclusion to, to the whole thing. So like, I like to, you know, go further with the moon cycles and divide them into like four weeks, roughly, you know what I'm saying? Give or take, because, you know, everything is, um, it's not like a perfect the way the way time is and, and things of that nature everything is not divided perfectly but you know essentially you could you can kind of divide it into about four weeks right 28 days if you will you know what i'm saying as far as a whole moon cycle so when you look at that first week it leads you up to the first square the first quarter of that so that is like kind of the spring portion you know, I like to kind of relate it to the seasons to make it easier to understand like your manifestation cycles and how you go about just moving with energies in general. Because even though every day we have to apply the sun sign, like throughout the whole month, you look at a month being 30 days, essentially at the shortest 28. But you look at a, a month, that's the sun's focus. So the sun is focusing, but it's going through different trials throughout the houses. Those are, I mean, throughout the moon, the moon movements. So the moon movements are the inner, is kind of like the in-between things that the sun has to adjust awareness on in order to take care of. If you look at the, the sun and moon as like working in tandem, that's kind of essentially what it is. The moon is like, even, even if we did want to take it to a different analogy and look at just like masculine and feminine energies, it's like the, the, the masculine energy is maintaining a certain level of focus and action towards one thing. Right. But that one thing has many different phases. So if you look at that, like, you know, I mean, we don't have to relate everything to, to, to some 3D shit. But even if you are looking at like a actual relationship between, a, you know, a man and a woman, you, you got the you can kind of understand, like, kind of how that has to flow as well. You know what I'm saying? As far as there being a, a central focus that you're putting exerting energy into as as far as the direction or the the plan the mode of operation and then you have the support system of that but along with that support system right it's almost like you have to work in order to receive that like you have to so whatever the the the, the moon or the feminine energy needs needs to be taken care of in order to receive the maximum uh return on that you know what I'm saying? As far as like, if you want something to care for you, you have to first care for it. Because even if you understand the feminine energy for what it is, it's the receiver. So in, in that, that's why in, in general, you know, women are courted, for instance, you know what I'm saying? Because there needs to be time and effort put into that in order to receive the potential of receiving those energies you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like that ebb and flow between the two now that's just that's like i'm giving y'all different perspectives to see the the energy i'm talking about so when you're actually talking about the energy itself um getting back to kind of like the more um you know uh, macro talking about it as a day-to-day -day process or, or a monthly process that 28 day cycle there's one there's a focus that would be the sun the season that we're in so for instance right now we're in virgo season so the focus is on the energy of as far as our action goes right but just the focus as far as our awareness it needs to be on or filtered through the lens or in the direction of working on something uh productivity uh details uh you know, mutable herb type things, routine schedules, patterns, our health and how we conduct our nervous system or how our nervous system is already constructed and what we need to do to adjust and make that better, you know, and also just improvements upon our life in general. That is being, that's the, the main central awareness. So we're aware of that. That is our mission. That is our plan at this, at this point in time. Then we go through the miniature phases of that or the many different shades of that, the, whatever, um, the the feminine energy needs or the, whatever the moon energy needs in order to, to receive the so you have to make it comfortable to make you comfortable right so it's a, it's a matter of you needing to use that that sun sign energy to take your awareness and and give light 
on that space of the moon and then you receive the reflection of that which is that caring for you if you don't care for it you don't receive those those if you want to call them i mean after a long day and you you get to relax you know what i'm saying and, and imagine somebody that you you know yo yo well i don't want to get too too 3d with it but like imagine imagine what that feels like to have your stress, you know, to be able to have somebody rub your shoulders, you know what I'm saying? Like after a long day of work, that kind of energy is what you receive when you put in the, when you do these moon cycles, right? You go through a certain moon phase and you use, again, your, it's, it's the moon. So, so for instance, say, say the moon right now is in Taurus. So it's like you taking care of Taurus things in a Virgo like way, because that's where the sun is at. So when you do that, you receive the benefits from that, you know what I'm saying? You receive that pat on the back at a, after a long day or that neck rub or shoulder rub or back rub after a long day of work because you put your focus on the right things that made that moon energy satisfied, right? And so even, and, and that's especially important during the waxing period because the waxing period is that time in which that energy is the, the, the as far as the, the feminine energy, you have to give it direction. That's the, it, that's the time period in which you have to, to you have to, it's almost like the act of leading, you know what I'm saying? You don't have no example, but you have to lead in order to direct the path. You have to set the tone, you know what I'm saying? This is the courtship, so you're courting. And then the full moon is like whether or not you get the girl or not, whether or not you you hit the, hit the mark, you know what I'm saying? Whether or not you've done enough to make this energy trust you. And then now you have that trust of that energy and the waning period is supposed to carry you throughout until your next, uh, you know, start of the new, new cycle, you know what I'm saying? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dave B. You watch the Dave B on TV, bro. We go beyond that area of bullshit that people be consuming on a day to day basis. And yeah, I, you know, skip that, you know, but we still gonna do it this time, this video, just because I felt like it was important. But now getting back to the point, you know, and also go ahead, hit that like button, go ahead, subscribe, go ahead, share this right now, because I know we getting into some real stuff. So go ahead, share this with somebody you believe it could be helpful for. Anyway, um, so when it comes to this energy, right? That, that that's what we're looking at as far as the moon needing to put our focus on that area in order for that to give us nourishment. You know what I'm saying? By pouring into it, it pours into us, especially important during the waxing, but during the waning, what's actually going on? So during the waning period, just like I, like, like I said, if you want to divide it into these four quarters, the first week is about, or seven days um, is about, or, <clears throat> Yeah, seven days, whatever. Let's keep it simple. That first seven days is about, you know, during the waxing period, we experience, we experience the spring and summer of that. So that is the sparking of a new idea. So during a new moon, it's like we're applying all these new ideas. And then by that first quarter, we've gone through enough experiences to make a firm decision. And that firm decision is what we experience the summertime, us going extra hard until the full moon. Once the full moon hits, boom, we hit fall. Fall is when we have to fall back and kind of just, uh, it's almost like a form of allowing things to kind of flow. You know what I'm saying? Trying to do too much during the fall period, it's because you are falling. That's because like, if you if you imagine yourself falling, you grabbing at something, just anything that you can hold on to, just so you don't you don't fall deep, plummet. You know what I'm saying? So you don't hit the ground. So you're scrambling. You know, this is where you see the most, the people going through the most kind of tower moment times. You know what I'm saying? Right on that full moon, that's the, the that'd be the the prime time for for um catastrophic events and things of that nature but then you hit that after that you know what i'm saying you hit that uh that next square that last square when we hit the last quarter and that leads us into the winter time so this is death transformation so i wanted to bring that up because that's where we at right now we're in that we're coming up on that last quarter, you know what I'm saying? And that last quarter is the death portion. So in the death portion, it's about letting go of what was, you know, we, we at this point need to have somewhat of a full conclusion. And now it's time to make a decision. So when we hit cardinal points, it's time for making decisions. It's time for set marks. You know, this is where this begin, where this ends and this begins. That's like cardinal energy. Mutable energy is the in-between. So as far as the sun the sun is in that mutable portion of the winter time, but as far as the moon as well, the moon is in is is in that is about to hit that point, and then when we hit, I don't want to confuse people. So basically, as far as the season we're in now, Virgo specifically is that 
mutable side before we hit that that cardinal so that i mean that that actually gives you an idea of where you need to be at currently now we're halfway through well coming up on halfway through a virgo season so at this point you should have a way better more firm more structured more clear more practical uh, or i don't say practical but just more of a firm idea on what it is that you need you've been doing wrong what's been working and what's not been working uh, at the second deacon of the like the sun being in the in, um 12 degree yeah sun being 12 degrees we're in the second deacon of virgo so i was kind of speaking in the beginning of that other video that is that's when we talk about deacons this is the slight adjustment or the I say the maturity. This lets you know the maturity of that sign. When you're in the first deacon, you're in a more immature space, but that's not negative. That's pure, that's curious, that's free and in, in, uh, more true to itself. Those that be that that uh though that first 10 degrees of a sign. Then you hit that 20 degrees. This is the slightly more mature, but you know, this is the, the the prime time, basically. This is where this energy is kind of like, it's old enough to understand certain things and how to use this energy in a different kind of way. But at the same time, it hasn't learned everything. It hasn't gone through everything. This this is kind of the more experimental or needing to be experimental time in a sign. You know what I'm saying? This is where the sign constantly need, needs to discover itself. So you can understand, like, depending on what degree you was born within that sign, like, as far as, your, as far as your sun sign, you could look at this at any planet, but the sun sign, just for the sake of, like, just keeping it simple, you can understand kind of your disposition in relation to, like, you know, that energy yourself, you know what I'm saying, where you could look at yourself and be like, okay, yeah, boom, I'm, I'm in this space, um, I'm more... I need to be more true to myself if I'm in the first 10 degrees of this sign. I need to be more true and and, and be willing to kind of be brave and make those mistakes, right? Um, I don't need to be timid at this time. That's the wrong energy to apply to my sign dependent uh, based on the degree I'm in. If you're in that uh, second degree, this is where you need to be more experimental. This is your prime time. This is where you're supposed to be in your full life form. So this is you pushing the limits experiments and doing new things if you're not doing that then you know okay shit I, I might not be in my true energy and this is also you experimenting with a, a different side of it so yeah like when we talk about the first 10 degrees this is like a more pure more more just being that energy in 10 in 20 and yeah in the second deacon that's more like yeah you know this energy but you're trying to d find your distinct way of going about it that's like if you think of you know youth and then you think of like that adult phase, you know what I'm saying? If you're talking about youth being maybe, you know, ten, you know, from from birth to about, let's say, 18, you know what I'm saying? And then you're looking at the, the, the this portion, the second deacon as about 19 to about, you know, 50 or something like that, you know, 50. And then you look at the last deacon, that's like your elderly, that's 60 plus. So when you're looking at 60 plus, that's like... Um, at 60 plus a sign or the third deacon of a sign, this is your maximum maturity in that area. This is where you need to be assessing what you've learned and be willing to pass it down to others. But this is also for you to slow yourself down and, and, and not slow down as in stop moving or lead into a stop moving, but you need to understand your next energy and you need to be thinking in a more forward type way. A, a way that's more so, you know, again, how a mature individual would think. You're thinking not so much about the day to day. You're not thinking about you're, you're like considering the whole picture. So this is your maximum maturity in that area, um, which can make you extremely wise. But again, you got to make sure you're not too wise for your own good or, you know, putting yourself in situations that you just can't keep up. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to be jumping in with the young people just doing you as far as that sign and that energy. You need to be taking a much more um uh a much more mature approach but like if you would think of like for instance you think of um two players in the nba right one player is young another player is real old so the player who's old might not be as quick and energetic and spontaneous and entertaining as the young player but the old player knows how to be efficient and that's that's it it's an increase in efficiency within that energy so that means using again you might use less energy but you when you do it's focused and it's potent you know what i'm saying you might not have as much so you need to be a lot more um 
deci uh, discerning about where, where you need to expend your energy. You know what I'm saying? But again, you don't have to play out like an old person just because you're a later deacon. It's just how you go about your energy. You might not have the same. It's just like a different flow of how that energy works. You know what I'm saying? And then you can understand it based upon the... So knowing... The, so, for instance, now we're in, when I say we're in the second deacon of Virgo being Capricorn, what I'm saying is, so when you start, the first 10 degrees is always that same sign. The next 10 degrees is the next sign within that element and then so on and so forth. The third being the, the last one. So this case, being that we're a Virgo, the next earth sign would be that Capricorn energy. So that, that planet that, that goes with Capricorn is Saturn. So you're looking at a more Saturnian Virgo. So this is a mix between Mercury and Saturn, which is, again, practical thought in a, a in a cardinal type way. So being able to not only not only are you uh, participating in your routine, but you're you've now you've mastered the act of setting a routine. You've decided for yourself what it is that you actually want to do. See, the first 10 degrees of this sign, we was experimenting with routines in general. We were paying attention looking at the details and gaining data and information on what's what we need to put on a routine what needs to be put on a routine in order for us to get our shit together now we're in that capricorn space it's now with saturn we already are making a lot of sense now now we know what we're talking about we have the the the, the data the to to back up whatever it is that we're focused on we're looking at this shit like oh yeah yeah we need to be on this, 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 and this time, type of time. We need to make sure this is structured. We need to have this type of schedule for this kind of, this type of activity. We're starting to come to those types of grips with ourselves now, which is kind of, that's where we're supposed to be at. So that, um, yeah, that's where we're supposed to be at. And if you, if you think about it in the way it, it keeps on going, by the time we hit the last 10 degrees, which would be, if in, in again, let's relate this back to what I was saying with these moon cycles. So right now, think about where we're at. We're in the 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 last quarter before we hit the new moon. So we're looking at the last week in a sense. This is the last week. In the last week, we are we are we're taking whatever it is that we have learned and we're using that as data to make the best decision possible for the next go. So we know that it's coming up, a new moon in Virgo. So what does that mean? Yeah, in the energy of scheduling, planning. And it's kind of interesting. I always thought it was interesting how the sun is in its first 10 degrees while the previous moon is wrapping up. And then it hits the new moon around the midpoint. Now, of course, sometimes it's different. You know what I'm saying? That's not always the case. But generally... That's what happens. So by the time we hit the second deacon, because that's how I noticed that when I was making the planners, it was like I was trying to write the deacons to let people know kind of where the energy was going to be at. But I had a hard time because throughout the week it would change and it would be that time in between. So, oh, yeah, that cabinet right left to the um, oven on the bottom. Yeah, because he, 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 he know to go to the top. So now he don't he don't think to go to the bottom. But, um, you know, it's that it's so when we hit the new moon is when we're in a adult stage of the the sun. So if you think about that, that's us being able to make We're supposed to be making a more wise and brave, uh, wiser than than straight up adolescence, but a more mature decision on what it is that we need to do. So and but it's in that time of being like a, a an adult. So that's that time like like a, like I said, them ages from nineteen to about fifty, where it's like it's time for you to just completely give yourself to what your focus is and and com completely invest in your life. So you look at that as like okay, boom. So that that's what we're leading to. So right now we need to be gathering as much data. That's why uh, in the post I was going I was I was really pointing out the fact that the moon. In its last degrees um, within the sign of Taurus, right? Because um, it's like 26 degrees, but it's it's going to be it's sextile in Neptune right now. So this is the better half of our day. About 4 p.m. is when it, it'll hit Gemini. But even then, we're still dealing with, you know, the, 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 the outer planets are pretty big. So we're we're getting hit with a lot. That energy in particular could have us indulge in um, our either creative work or 
uh, extreme escapism, which is us trying to get away from the work because that moon exalted in Taurus is like wanting to feel maximum comfort, maximum pleasure in that sense, you know, being completely comfortable. So that comfort zone right now can throw us off because there's so much pressure going on as far as what we got to do, as far as changes, keeping up with things, we're assessing so much, we're doing a lot of heavy thinking that anything that looks like, uh, 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 it's like working and you, you, you know, there's no chairs in the facility, but you see that one opportunity to sit down on the chair, you're like, oh my gosh. It's like they can mess us up. We could want to sit down. You know, we're, we're dying for a chance to just get a break. We're dying for a chance just to just to be able to sit back and just breathe for a second. But it's like that's not where we at right now. You know, we, we, we there's a lot of decisions we have to make. There's a lot of things going on that we have to pay attention to and be privy to. So we need the better part of our mind and we need to keep our mind agile. So right now it's like as far as our focus Try not to get too bogged down on, you know, it's like you want to keep as much focus you can on, or I'll say this, it's just an opportunity right now. Because that, that's what I was mainly talking about, just the moon being exalted, sextile and Neptune. It's an opportunity for you to kind of slip into wanting to relax and see today is a, is a Mars day. And this is actually really good energy. And see, this is why you don't really want to take that route or you may not want to. Because, see, if you need that, that's what it's there for. But we have to understand these energies is what taps us into these lower natures. So it's like we can't allow these energies to take over what we know we're supposed to be doing. So, for instance, yeah, you might want to and you might come up to, with all kinds of justifications to be like, oh, yeah, that's the best idea. But push yourself past just what your momentary desire is. Like, push yourself past that and really ask yourself, well, you know, what is my goal? Like, the, like, what's my goal and what does my goal require me to do in order to reach it? Because that, that's, that's the thing. We That's where we at right now. When it comes to the Virgo energy, it's being applied to improving ourselves to be more um, capable of achieving our goals. Like, it's, 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 you know, remember, this is the development of our new self within this new world. So this is, again, from the beginning of this, this is... The, the previous new moon and this is a good point the previous new moon being in leo right that's what we started with a new character and making decisions based on this new character so we we haven't finished that moon cycle yet so this is still part of our new character even though the sun shifted into virgo but that that that's that was that connection to say oh no we're working on something we're working on ourselves right now we we need to put our awareness on the routines, patterns, things that even health regimens that our new self needs in order to fulfill his job, in order to do a good job. And we're improving. So this is an extreme time of self-improvement. And we're going into the, this is like always the shadow uh, work portion of the year as well. Virgo season is, is, is old, like September, be the September, October, and kind of November high key the fall time you know what i'm saying like that's really what the fall the whole and terry's corner is about it's about shadow work and that's why it's so powerful here as far as like having awareness of it because it taps you into it's like the missing link you know this world emphasizes a lot of the the michael the the, the summertime things it emphasizes those desires but you know with the and terry side it helps you or angle helps you understand is is how where those things lead to and where those those pitfalls and cycles continue on and become the reason that we're stuck in something and um you know so right now in in general we're we're go, we're heading into that shadow work time so going into and that that's really just like the fall period but being that this is the tail end of the summer we feel that pressure so we can look at the summertime like even everybody right now is looking at what they've done this summer and what and if you weren't actually putting in energy during the summer and doing what it is you wanted to do standing on your one and and and, and you know doing what you say you was finna do being that trying new things out and establishing that rapport with just the energy and the universe in general if you weren't doing that you are dealing with a lot more um turmoil at the moment because you see where you've been slacking but it's it's highlighted now that's what virgo does it brings the results to your face and you can't deny them it's reality so you like damn we, this is this is the sum of my actions this is what i've accumulated this is what i've 
I, I, I'm left with after the harvest. So everybody's going through that motion. That's why right now is the time, like the time period right now is extreme for, for scammers and people who who already decided their fate, already decided that, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to run it up. I'm gonna have to go outside, you know? Or if you outside just doing things, you know, you're not supposed to do or that's, you know, taking you to it. So that's the overall awareness that, you know, we're gonna be in at the moment, just trying to get our ourselves together. And again, this is that year seven stuff. So this is all of us deciding on that higher angle or whether or not we just gotta come to grips with that lower angle that we stuck in in order to get to a better space. And it's kind of like, hey, I just gotta do what I gotta do. And there's no regard for anything other than that. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where everybody's coming to grips with. So when you look at yourself and, and, and your understanding of what we're going through at the moment is, is everybody coming to that conclusion because that's what Libra season is going to bring. And that conclusion needs to be, you know, again, a firm step in a new direction. Now, this is a time where a lot of people be indecisive based upon what they have accumulated because you might be in a situation where you just don't have enough to go where you want to go. So you have to settle. And this is where you see a lot of people be making um, just initiating weird stuff. Uh, during that during that October time that leads them to going through an experience throughout the winter that that make them want to change their life back when the springtime come around as people you know heading into and again like there's all different kinds of ways that kind of materializes because that could be like you know people just jumping into situations based upon what they need or what they lack at the moment not actually a decision that they're looking to you know uphold and 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 to stick and last for a, an extended period of time um you know, again, like, you know, when, when you consider the, and it's like funny because there'd be different things, like even when people be like on some cuffing season type stuff, oh, it's, it's getting cold outside, you know, so people end up shacking up with just whoever they, they've been kicking in with throughout the summer, not really understanding that that's who they want to be with or not. And then boom, you know what I'm saying? You get these same people that break up during, when it gets hot again, the same problems that started start to, you know, show back up because it's no longer a time in which you were just doing what you needed to do to stay warm for the winter. You know what I'm saying? So that type of uh, analogy applied to this being different people doing that with their, with themselves, with their spirit, with what they're involved in stuff like that. You was just, you wasn't really figuring out what it is that you wanted to do. You was kind of following the trends or you was you was doing something that just wasn't what you were supposed to be doing. So you looking at your harvest like, damn, I don't even have nothing of value that I can take to the next place. What do I do? And that puts you in that space to be like, damn, I, okay, well, I'm going to have to make do with what I got. And that's everybody's conclusion. That's what. That's why Libra season comes with so much karma, because that's the space that everybody's in. People don't even have a full, you know, it's like you're in, especially with the sun being depleted, it has to lean on other things that look more like manipulation or more like, you know, getting somebody to think one way while you're trying to do another thing. Again, that's that Scorpio energy. And then during those times, that's when the most things start to go under the under the radar. You think you can get away with certain stuff, even through uh, Sagittarius, you know what I'm saying? New things come to light, but still, you, you still might have a gift to gab and ability to kind of rock people to sleep. It usually lasts this long. It, it can last all the way up until the next summer, you know what I'm saying? Being something that's that now revealed depending on how long you you chose to put that off but that's usually how the flow goes and you know what i'm saying you really lucky if it gets exposed during every season because then at least you can start fresh but some people is able to kind of keep it going on and on and on until leo season and then that's when things be like oh man i didn't even know this from all the way back when and then that that'd be a, a different kind of story but right now being that that we're in the dead tail in the summer that's the energy going on now the the moon like i was saying that we're approaching that last quarter so in this in this last quarter when we hit the moon in gemini that see that's why it's important right now because that's what we're trying to do we're collecting as much data as we can so that when the new moon comes we're able to jump in that energy in a much more clear mature wise perspective now it's kind of like it's still shedding though and so it's like the process of shedding through the new information that we're like, how do I put it? Because what we're shedding is the moon being in Taurus and the sun being in, in Virgo. That, that's like us grounding, us checking, going through the check box. We're grounding this new self and we're coming to firm, firm decisions based upon our values on what we need to maintain as a routine. So these firm decisions that we're making, again, that's on the better. That's if you're planting the good seeds. That's where you should be at. 
then there's going to be individuals who overindulge in the pleasure aspects or go too far with their creativity based upon what the moon is telling them. The moon, that extreme comfort and that, that desire for that extreme comfort and then the opportunity to even get lost in that, into that as far as Neptune and what that goes for. That's just the recipe for that type of, uh, you know, situation. And there's a lot of, like I was saying before, we're, there's there's so many so many things going on, especially with even, you know, Jupiter going retrograde. So Jupiter retrograde, this is old belief systems and old things that we could slip into as as old forms of faith that might not work anymore. You know what I'm saying? Based upon us sitting back and relying on something this is us needing to actually be more uh initiative when it, or taking more initiative and in creating our luck in certain situations making certain things be true as far as our faith you know what i'm saying faith being able to apply real work we have to apply what we've learned in order to not make past mistakes and not or, or get sucked up in past experiences because right now that's what we're going to be seeing we're going to be seeing similarities from past experiences and how those things Okay, boom, it prevented me from this. But we have to be able to make better decisions based upon what we know to be true that we've been working on. Because you would have been in there collecting information and data. So we need to now apply that, what we know, in order to get to a better space when it comes to, um, you know, our you know better things that we can build faith on. You know what I'm saying? Not just reliving the same mistakes. You know what I'm saying? We got to make sure that we're seeing things and, and, and seeing seeing things ahead of time and making movements like that but the you know for the most part but again sextiling that that neptune energy putting that that illusion back in your face or just things you have to iron out with that delusion you know what i'm saying and then even uranus being past changes that we've made looking at the value of those things and whether or not it's good and see even jupiter retrograde it's like what was the value of what we've experienced previously or what is the value of the wisdom and things that we learned previously and how we can apply that new that that thing to this you know what i'm saying in order to make this smooth for ourselves so these are the different things that we're kind of experiencing and we're, we're, we're trying to get a grip on as far as awareness um and then all the while transforming these things so we can take power over them, you know, because even Neptune sextiling uh, Capricorn, us needing to take power over what it is that we might be ex seeing in, in our mind. And that's not quite correct. That's not really reality. That's not something that can work right now, you know. So we're dealing with all those different types of energy. So, um, and uh, what was I going to say? So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the biggest thing. So coming up on this last quarter, right, as the moon slips into Gemini, it's really about, you know, we want to be in a lighter space. And and really, this is the fall. So this is kind of us reflecting on these ty types of things and being able to accumulate as much information as we can. Then when it hits Gemini, that's the death portion. So that's when we need to be like in Gemini, we need to be lighting ourselves up. So being willing to communicate a lot of the things that's been heavy on our mind and being able to communicate them. And we should be around individuals who we can depend on as far as re within relation. Uh, if we've been doing the energy correctly, if we've been kind of standing in our areas and, and following our spiritual path according to our individuality and who we are um, and standing true in that, standing, standing in your truth, because it's already going to have certain people around you that you're only going to have access to relate to that are, that are people who resonate with that. Now, if you've been lying to yourself and you haven't been showing up in those spaces, you might still have people around you who don't quite, un who don't speak the same language as you. And that right there could, you know, put you at a disadvantage because you're going to not have enough airways to release through Gemini energy, the conversations needed to make things smooth, to make you feel smooth, To you know what I'm saying? Because there's things you also have to say through due to that square with Virgo, there's things you have to say and learn about what it is that you're thinking about. There's things you have to, you know, co there's conversations that need to be had about what you're working on and what people around you are working on and, and th things like that. So you need to be light enough to be able to have those conversations and through that, that's a form of releasing as well. You know, the communication of it, the exchange of information, because you might come into some new information that goes, oh, okay, I understand what that means. And then the moon is going to go into cancer. That's going to be an opportunity for you to work on your inner world, to work on your comfort zones. And this is this might be, this is like more so an energy in which 
you can work on your mood and, and how it's been affecting your ability to get certain things done. Um, you can work and adjust certain things that you've been so comfortable in that it's prevented you from going to a new space. Working on those things and creating structure for, for, for those things, that's an extremely internal energy that could serve you well leading up. But that's going to come with certain transformations that we have to make. Um, and that energy is going to be big. I don't want to talk too much about it because, um, of course, we're not there yet. But I'm talking in, in terms of just the waning period and how it's going to sum up for every, you know, for all of us. Now, going into Leo, then it's going to take that new awareness as far as what you decided to initiate as far as a feeling to contribute to what you've been working on. And what you're working on really is just yourself. Um, it's going to lead to you being fixed in that and that's going to become your fixed view. So this is a new form of confidence in that area and it's going to be conjunct Venus and Venus is now direct. So like being able to fully embrace that. Um, the sun's still going to be in Virgo, so it's going to be a way of um, reacting to wh who you are, but doing it in a way in which you can still express it in a methodical type way. And that's going to lead us into the new moon in Virgo, which is going to be the, uh, the, the new forms of routines that are correlated with that final feeling that we lock in on when the moon hits Leo. So a lot coming. So, you know, I say all that just to say that's that's part of that release, because there's old things as far as insecurities or old comfort zones that we're going to have to release when the moon hits cancer. There's old ways of thinking that we're going to have to release when the moon hits Gemini. And that's going to be that learning process, because we're going to be like, look, all these random scattered thoughts aren't helping with what I'm supposed to be focusing on, aren't helping with what I'm working on. Aren't, aren't contributing anything practical to what I'm doing. It's cool to have all the data, but I just need things specific. So that's that Virgo energy getting way more specific about what it's intaking and what it's communicating about. And then again, the release of comfort zones based upon what I'm working on. This is the opportunity for me to start to build past that and release those old insecurities that's in those old moods getting out of those old moves that's making me unproductive, right? And of course, there's other sides to this energy because if you're on the negative side, this is going to be you justifying why you should slow up work and tend to the home or tend to something that's more comfortable. And if that's you, then that's just you. And then finally, uh, Leo, old perceptions. You know what I'm saying? Old perceptions of how we used to see ourselves. Yeah, there's no more. We have to stand strong in our new energy. And then boom, new moon in, in Virgo. And it's going to need us to have a new plan of action. And that's what we're leading up to. So I just wanted to say that because, you know, and put that in video form because that, that's really the depth of, of what we're experiencing at the moment. So we all, you know, we need to keep our eyes on the prize and remember what it is you're working towards. Don't let that slow you up. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a lot coming at you right now, but stay strong and yeah, we're going to get to it. Much love. Catch you on the next one. Peace.